Hello and welcome to this episode in the ClearPass workshop series. My name is Herman and we will build a ClearPass deployment in the series from scratch and integrate with wireless, wired, active directory and much more. So in this video, we will get rid of those nasty certificate warnings. So here on the top, you can see that this website is uh, seen as non-secure and uh, we see privacy errors when we uh, want to go to the device on the host name. So what we did in the past here under administration is that for the radius, we had to install a certificate, which was originated from our Active Directory domain uh, certificate server. Um, but we did not uh, yet put in an HTTPS certificate. So that's uh, what we will be doing in this video. So first, if you are doing anything with ClearPass and certificates, uh, please find and read the ClearPass Certificates 101 Tech Note because it's a very good document which will help you to pick the right certificates. And in general, um, so your case may be different, but in general, it is uh, most appropriate to use a private CA to issue the radius certificate. So like we did with our AD. Um, and a big exception to that is if you are running a university, you want to provide access to uh, other Rome users where you have very little control over the endpoint devices. But if you are doing uh, onboarding or running together with Active Directory, in most cases, it's uh, the best choice to pick the private CA from uh, your Microsoft or another CA that you have in your enterprise. For the certificates on the HTTPS side, in most cases, it's better to pick a public certificate. So it's generic trusted. And if guests access your ClearPass server, they will see that this uh, connection is secure uh, without the need of putting in their own certificate authorities before they can use your network. And another thing uh, that applies is that in most cases, if you can put the same certificates on all your appliances, yeah, that would be uh, the best. So for Radius, um, it's in general uh, best to put the same certificate on all appliances. So if you are roaming between appliances, the clients will not notice. For HTTPS, of course, DNS should uh, facilitate that. So you need to have so-called certificate alternative names uh, in your certificate or a wildcard, which we will be using uh, today. So let's see uh, what we got. So I already requested a certificate from my certificate authority. If you want to uh, create a certificate signing request, you can do it from here. So type in the stuff we did that for the ready certificate. If you want to see that, uh, go back. Um, I did those steps and uh, I received my certificates uh, already. So what you also can see is that we have here all our appliances. So let's uh, start now with our publisher and uh, indeed put the HPS certificate in it. We go here to the import. We uh, choose the file here. And uh, first we need to uh, enter the certificate and then we need to uh, enter the key and we need to put a passphrase on there um, if it is on the key and uh, we press import. And like we had with the ready certificate, uh, it now tells me that I need to have the intermediate certificates in my trust list. So let's get those in the trust list. Go to the trust list here. We go here to add, choose file. And uh, I received those intermediate certificates from my certificate authority. I'm running certificate from uh, Komodo. Um, so let's uh, import this. And so you can see it's in there now. And uh, let's get the other one in there as well. The domain validated. Um, and if you don't have the intermediate certificates, uh, if you have the certificate available somewhere, you can check the certificate hierarchy or you go to the certificate provider. So here we have the domain validation secure service uh, CA, which has issued my uh, uh, certificate um, and a few others. So let's see where we end up now. Um, go to the service certificates. HTTPS, let's import it again. Uh, 
and now we see another one uh, that that the this Atrust external CA must be enabled. So let's do that. That's this one. So we enable it. Close, and here under the service certificates. Hope that it will work now. And what you now can see here is that the certificate with all the intermediates is now in uh, ClearPass. And it says now uh, that we need to log in again to continue. So let's pick this one. Uh, this one is on uh, cpm1.arubalab.com. And as you can see, the certificate started at arubalab.com. So this one should match. So you can see that uh, the certificate now is uh, mentioned as uh, secure. Um, and if we want to do the control shift I in Google Chrome, what we can do here under security as in beat being hidden under view certificate, we can see that the HTTPS certificate is valid. So it's still valid for almost three years. We can see the details in here and the certificate part. So all the way through the top. So finally, and let's, Move this one as well to cppm1.arubalab.com or make it minus pub for the publisher. So you can see now our connection is secure and that's what we liked. And now this works. We need to import the same certificates for all the other, um, for all the other uh, nodes in the cluster. So you need to do this per note so but it's just a repeat certificate key password with this one certificate key Password. By the way, if you don't have a password set on the key, just type ABC or something um, that will work um, as well. So import. Oh, and cancel. And after this one, all the appliances should now run with the right certificate. And um, yeah, that was pretty easy, but um, it is important that you uh, have the proper certificates. And for that, read the certificate 101 for ClearPass. So thanks for watching. There will be more videos in this series. So uh, subscribe to the channel and you will be notified when there are new videos out. Thanks for watching for now. Bye.